Welcome to the America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown, where we bring you highlights from our policy experts' media appearances. Each week, we address the nation's pressing issues, guided by policies that put America first. First, we hear from AFPI President Brooke Rollins. Brooke outlines the stark policy differences between the Trump and Biden-Harris administrations, emphasizing Trump's lead on issues like the economy, immigration, and foreign policy. That's absolutely right. Well, it reminds me of Hillary Clinton's deplorables comment right. um, seven, eight years ago now. And and really just that it just goes to the elitist attitude that the left, that these liberal politicians have, like Barack Obama, um, like Kamala Harris. And what's particularly rich is I read the same article, uh, Dagan, in The Washington Post. Listen, I was one of five women that were on President Trump's top staff in the last White House, Sarah Sanders, Kellyanne Conway, Ivanka Trump. Trump, Mercedes Schlepp, myself. Between us, we had 19 school-aged children. Nowhere in America would you find a leadership team like that with the trust from the President of the United States and the amount of work that was done and the good that was done to ensure the American promise, which will be done again. Listen, full stop here. Women that believe in women in defining what a woman is, which the other side can't even do, that believe in protecting girls, that believe in protecting two bathrooms, that believe in ensuring that the family can stay safe and intact and can buy the groceries and have the future that they that they dream of. In her Newsmax appearance, Brooke addresses the struggle of America's middle class under recent economic policies and the need for a renewed focus on domestic job growth. She discusses the importance of supporting the middle class and the difference Trump's policies made in job growth and economic opportunity, particularly during the years before the pandemic. We were focused on the middle class and we were focused on the forgotten Americans. And for the first time, listen, this is not me. It's probably not Monica. Rob, it may not be you. If you were born after 1990, you had never experienced an American economy that worked for you. You never fully understood what job growth, job opportunity, entrepreneurialism, you never knew what that meant. Right. Except the three years before COVID during Donald J. Trump. That was it since 1990. Next, Riley Gaines stands up for fair competition in women's sports, supporting policies to protect athletes. Riley advocates for legislation to maintain female-only sports, emphasizing fairness and safety for women athletes. We talk a lot about the unfairness. We talk a lot about the locker room aspect. We talk about how the free speech element and how women are being censored by their universities or, or these larger institutions or what have you. But the safety aspect is a huge, huge piece of why this matters. And we can see now how, of course, as more and more unfortunate circumstances continue to happen across the country, we can see how it's affecting races, whether it's the presidential race or whether it's these key Senate races. Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg weighs in on defense strategies against global threats, stressing America's commitment to its allies. General Kellogg highlights the importance of deterrence and safeguarding national and allied security, focusing on the U.S.'s commitment to Israel and proactive defense measures. A couple of reasons why I think we need to think about why this is happening. One, I think that, that Israel has been at war for over a year and they may be running a little bit short of weapon systems like the arrow system, which is their upper end area defense system. And I think it's important that the president and Benjamin Netanyahu had a discussion the first time in 50 days, because one, it was a discussion on hardware. Can you help us out sending these systems? And the discussion was also say, what are you going to do going into the future? What are you going to do against against Iran? And I think that's one of the reasons why they've kind of held back, they, the, the Israelis, because I want to make sure that they want to make sure they were set in position with the defensive systems like the Thad system, like their aero system, their David Sling system, their basically their Iron Dome system. And I want to make sure that they're ready to go. And then they're going to say, OK, this is how we're going to respond. And I think it's given them a strategic pause, which is good, because this causes the, the Iranians now to think, what are they going to do? I think there's still a lot of options on the table. Maybe, just maybe, what the Israelis are saying is they're going to do the same thing yeah. that President Trump did after the, uh, after the Iranians shot at Al-Assad Air Base. He didn't do anything. He just waited it out. They may wait for the next time before they hit again, make sure the armament systems are in place, and then respond. Robert Wilkie shares insights on the Middle East escalating security concerns and how strong alliances are essential to stability. Robert discusses the significance of a clear U.S. strategy to support allies and deter threats from groups like Hezbollah, 
underscoring the importance of maintaining regional stability. So I want to ask you about this. Yesterday as well, the U.S. announcing it will send troops and its air defense system to Israel to help bolster defense from those Iranian threats. Is this enough? What do you make of this? Well, it's not enough. I'm glad they're doing it. I think it's a good message. But um, as you and I have talked about many times, Charlotte, what's happening in the Gulf of Aden, uh, the, outside the Persian Gulf and the Suez Canal, really points to the fecklessness of this administration as America's ships and international shipping continue to be attacked by Iranian proxies in, Lem in Yemen. We do nothing in terms of a concentrated response. And think about the downstream effects of this that this administration has no idea about. When you cut off the Suez Canal, what do you do? You not only increase the price of international shipping, uh -huh. but you hurt the economy of Egypt because they can no longer get revenue from the Suez Canal. And again, American ships are constantly under attack. And the, and the Iranians have absolutely no fear that Joe Biden is going to use those massive naval assets to do anything to stop the Iranians and their proxies from attacking America. Finally, Matt Whitaker speaks on immigration policy, calling for action against sanctuary cities and illegal activities. Matt stresses the necessity of effective immigration control policies, critiquing sanctuary city policies that allow repeat offenders to stay within U.S. communities. It is, and, and what's happening is, you, so you have criminals that are here in this country illegally, they've now committed crimes, they're in jail for those crimes, and typically the ICE would file a detainer and tell the sheriff to please hold them, we're gonna come get them and yeah, deport them from the country. Instead, they're just letting them walk out the back door already convicted, or having served their time, and instead of leaving the country, they're leaving them in the country uh, to commit more crimes and, and again, to menace uh, our fellow citizens. It's, it's, it's an insane policy and we need to get rid of uh, that in addition to all these other tools we have oh. at our disposal. Yeah. That wraps up this week's America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you found these insights from our policy experts valuable. Let us know your thoughts and feedback in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and share this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an important update on the America First agenda. For more information on our policy and initiatives, visit AmericaFirstPolicy.com.